and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. You know what we always do. We always bring you information so you can be educated. We want to be wise. We want to actually inspire you and motivate you. We have an awesome guest here in the presence today. We have the international artist Danny Clay. He's sharp, isn't he? Welcome to Good Deeds. How you doing? I'm good. Can you say that awesome thing one more time? <laughs> You're awesome. You like that. Say it. Wait a minute. Awesome, brilliant, uh, uh, loving. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Function in the anointing, man. <laughs> uh, welcome to Good Deeds. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. I love your outfit, though. That's, I like that color. Well, you know, that brother got to do what a brother got to do. And that represent, Get right? my grown man on. <laughs> That's all right. Well, just tell us a little bit more about yourself and the awesome things that's going on in your life. Well, as you said, my name is Danny Clay. And I'm um, from a little small town called Brunswick, Georgia, and I'm living up here in the big city of Atlanta now. <laughs> and uh, I've been really, really blessed with a second chance at life. You know, uh, some people know me from being in Tyler Perry's Medea's Big Happy Family. And then some people know me from being discovered by Steve Harvey on the Steve Harvey Morning Show in 2007 singing songs by Luther Vandross. And I was on tour with Steve Harvey for almost four years as his opening act. And uh, I've, I've been blessed to share the stage with, with a, a lot of people. Charlie Wilson uh, did a show in Puerto Rico with John Legend. I've done shows with uh, Music Soul Child, Neo, you know, being on the same mm -hmm. billet as them. And so it's been a blessing, you know. And then I was picked up by Tyler Perry and invited to come to Tyler, Tyler Perry Studios to, to uh, do a in-person audition for Medea's Big Happy Family. And he hired me on the spot. And so it's been a blessing. And so, uh, you know, God is amazing. It's just, you know, but it hasn't always been peaches mm -hmm. and cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing peaches and cream. <laughs> See that you own it. <laughs> I am so on it. Yes. But yeah, um, I'm from Brunswick. And uh, let me give you the drop backdrop of where I come from. Uh, high school graduate, class of 86, Brunswick High. I went to the Marine Corps. I was a legal services specialist in the United States Marine Corps. And you know, there was some personal things going on with me. Uh, never had a relationship with my daddy. Now, he was he was very much foundational in my life, although he wasn't there. I've always desired strongly to have a relationship with my daddy, and I was kept from that. And he, when I went to him to, uh, he never came to see me do anything in life, anything in life, uh, Little League baseball, football, high school football, prom, graduation, nothing. When I, I even sung for the first time publicly in show choir in high school back in, 85 in Brunswick High, and he didn't come see me do that, and he had free tickets to come, and he would never support me, you know, what I was doing, but my daddy loved me, but not in that way, mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, he would always give me money if I saw him on the street, but I've never spent one night in his house before, never in my life, mm -hmm. and I've always, again, like a lot of young dudes out there now, young, young guys, they want to have a relationship with their dad, and for whatever reason, there's some, some gulf between the biological mother and the biological father, and nobody's replacing that. Nobody can replace that. And so, you know, sometimes kids act out, then sometimes they don't. But it's necessary for kids to have, men, young boys, to have a relationship with their father because I didn't learn manhood from my dad. You know, I learned manhood through trial and error, and, wow. and a lot of error came along with my trials. And so uh, I went to my daddy before I went to school in California, legal services, legal administration school. And I was like, I didn't care. This is after I graduated from a Marine Corps boot camp. Don't care what happened when I was a kid. Uh, Dad, I want me and you to have a relationship. And when I come back from school, I'm going to have X amount of dollars for, as a bonus. And I want to come back and hang out with you and even to get us an outfit, mm -hmm. you know, a father-son kind of thing. And I'm a grown man then, you know, but I still wanted to be my daddy's son. And so he was cool with it. And when I went out to school, uh, my daddy died of a heart attack. Mm. And that kind of really destroyed me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I, I didn't know how to, I, I didn't have nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have no, there was, I was going through mental problems. And I didn't, doing 80, in 87, 88, there was no avenue to go get help without it being a drop on your, you know, you as a, in the military. And so, you know, I walked away from all that. But before I did, I made a bad decision as a young boy, and I got on drugs. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the drug was crack. And I came home from the military uh, on crack. And it um, culminated in me doing criminal activity, mm -hmm. running with, I was the wrong crowd to run, run with. Not just running with the wrong crowd, I was the wrong crowd. And so I ended up serving time. 
I served, uh, you know, some time in prison. But you know, I'm telling you, you can, people can call it what they want to call it, but God gave me a second chance at life because I asked for it, number one. And I had to forgive myself. I had to forgive myself. I had to forgive everybody who contributed to, you know, what was going on with me to include my daddy. I had to forgive everybody, you know, because we're all human. We all made bad decisions. Not mistakes, but bad decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, a mistake is something. I walk around the corner and I step on a, a nail. I didn't see the nail. And so I didn't have no intentions of stepping on the nail. That's a mistake. Yes. <laughs> but if I see the nail, mm -hmm. I walk around the corner and I think, well, I'm barefoot, but the nail won't hurt me. And I decide to walk on and hit the nail and it stick me. Well, that's a bad decision. Yes. Because it results in a bad consequence, pain. So I made bad decisions. And so God just gave me a second chance at life. And so when I came out of, of uh, my incarceration, you know, um, I was fortunate, you know, in Brunswick to meet uh, nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I was working. I was working as a utility locator at the time. But pretty good job locating the underground lines, painting them and flagging them. I had a car. They gave me a company car. They gave me a laptop computer and a cell phone. And I liked that because it said, they said to me, we trust you. And that's a person wants to be trusted and yes. give, you know, have a good job that's saying, hey, we trust you. Go take care of this equipment, but do this job. And I had counties, you know, that I was over, you know, territories mm -hmm. that I was over. And so uh, I would listen to the Steve Harvey Morning Show driving from Brunswick to Hinesville. Mm -hmm. and That's like a 40-minute drive. And I would always listen to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And this is how amazing God is. I used to watch Steve Harvey when I was in prison. Wow. When he was hosting Showtime at the Apollo, I used to watch mm -hmm. it. I watched it when he had the Steve Harvey show with, uh, uh, with Wendy Raquel Robinson playing uh, Regina Greer, the principal. Mm -hmm. Admired this guy. Never, ever in life did I ever think that I would work with Steve Harvey. Used to watch Tyler Perry and throughout you know, prison. You know, we see stuff where he's coming and, and mm -hmm. doing plays and whatnot. And occasionally you'll see a, a Tyler Perry movie or something. And so, you know, I never envisioned, ever, ever, ever envisioned me on stage working with Tyler Perry. But I knew that I would want to be in the entertainment field because I believe God gave me that gift. Yes. And so prior to that, I mean, even prior to coming to prison, you know, I used to sing Luther Vandross songs mm -hmm. in school and, you know, in, in the, at the house and whatnot. And my mother used to call me her little Luther. <laughs> okay. And so um, I was always pretty good at singing Luther songs. And so... Um, a cheerleader told me I sound like Luther. Mm -hmm. I was a young boy, a, a girl, Sonya Williams. No, Sonya Johnson, I'm sorry. Sonya Johnson told me, mm, who's that singing that song? It's never too much. And I wasn't really that big of a Luther fan, but I liked that song. Yes, yes. And so, uh, you know, they pointed to me, and she was a senior in high school, and I was like in the eighth grade. You don't talk to senior mm -hmm. girls, but they may have a boyfriend that won't appreciate that. Yeah, that's right. So you don't mess with none of them. And she was really like one of the best looking girls, period. She, we rode a bus together. And she gave me that compliment. And it's important sometimes to speak life and mm -hmm. positivity to somebody mm -hmm. because you don't know how it's going to affect their lives. That's right. And so, and this is going to lead up to what ha what's happening with me now. Um, so I went home and told my mother, you know, Sonny Johnson said, I sound like Luther. <laughs> and, I was, and I've been singing Luther songs ever since, I tell you. And so, Thank you, Sonia. <laughs> That's amazing. But you know what you're saying is so awesome because if when somebody compliments you, that actually brings life. Yeah, it does. And you speak life as well. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Because Didn't... life and death is in the, the power, power of the, the tongue. tongue. That's amazing. Woo, Mr. Clay, we have the awesome time. We're going to just take a smidget break, you guys. I know you're on the edge of your seat. I just got to sit down, okay? But we're going to take a little break and we'll be right back with more of this awesome information. You know, this is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. You guys, we're back. We're having an awesome time. Danny Clay, he's <laughs> you giving us some awesome information. This movement that you actually are talking about, we are behind you. We need to actually stand up and do some great things. But let's go a little bit further. I really enjoyed that the, the young lady that helped you with the Lucha Van Draws and all the things that you actually learned at a young age. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about that if it's okay. Yeah. That then your backbone, your foundation, that's yeah. just powerful. Yeah, when I, you know, I never ever set out to sound like Luther. But, you know, it's a gift from God. And when 
there was never a song that he ever sung that I couldn't sing. Since I lost my baby, you know, if this world were mine, I would place at your feet. Let me hold you tight. Well, see, that's natural for me. Wow. I don't have to change my voice. It's just a natural tonation for me. And so I just see it as a gift from God. So, you know, I was really, really blessed to be invited by Steve Harvey. You know, I sung on the morning show. And normally you sing for like maybe eight to ten seconds. And then they go to the next contestant. I was the third contestant on the Steve Harvey morning show talent show on the air talent show. And he had me singing for 45 minutes. Wow. Two days in a row. On a Tuesday and a Wednesday, I did the same thing. He interviewed me. And then, you know, I got so blessed. He, uh, he had me live on the radio. He flew me to Philadelphia to be in the uh, Unity, Day, Unity Day radio special. Steve Harvey Morning Show, you know, mobile, go wherever mm -hmm. you want to go. And so I was, the, you know, normally he had recording artists that are established artists to come in and interview live and whatnot. He had me on there. Wow. And at the Prince Theater, and I got a chance to perform, and it was just an, an amazing thing. It was amazing. And so he had me open all of his shows, mm -hmm. and, I, and I got crazy standing ovations. And now, again, as I said, I was invited by Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is awesome. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry, let me, let me repeat myself. Tyler Perry is really awesome to work with, I'm telling you. He's a consummate professional, and he's a blesser. Wow. He is a blesser. He's a giver. The stuff that you see on, with him giving this and giving that, that's not fake. That's him. That's mm -hmm. the, the movie that he had, Good Deeds, mm -hmm. when he was giving, that's really Tyler Perry. Just putting on a, a, a name for the movie's sake. That's wow. really him. That's how he is. That's what I observed for the, the time that I was with him. He's a giver. Wow. I've never had a birthday party in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And he found out that my, we was in Baltimore, Maryland, October 8th, which is my birthday. We was doing a show, Friday, a Friday night show. And afterwards, he found out that it was my birthday. He canceled his plans and locked down a restaurant and threw me a birthday party. Wow. That's special. That, he didn't have to do that. No, no, you know? no. And it was an amazing blessing because you know, it, it overwhelmed me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow. And so um, when you see him giving, that's how he is, man. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to it's, it's, it's a blessing to be around that guy. So I look forward to working with him soon one day again. And even if I don't, man, I'm so grateful. Oh, yes. Because I was on stage and I toured with him. And I had, my pastor one time told me, when somebody, is, when somebody has an established business and they bring you into it, they put their reputation in your hands. Yes. And so for a moment, he put his reputation in my hands and had me as the finale of Medea's Big Happy Family. I sung If Only For One Night at the end of the stage play. And he set me up to be, to be blessed. And, and, I, and I'm getting blessed right now today from that. Wow. So, you know, now I have a song that I'm doing on my own. Uh, it's called Magnificent Lady. Mm -hmm. The story behind that is that I am tired of, of songs that degrade you disrespect you and put you down as a woman when you are our greatest asset. You give birth to our children. You cook our meals. You clean our homes. You keep us in order. Mm -hmm. And you are our backbone. You, the woman, are our backbones. How dare we, men, allow the, the media and the, the, the industry mm -hmm. to, to give us money to sell you out? Wow. See, I come from a woman. A good woman. She may not be perfect. Oh, but that was my mother. Yes. My mother comes from a mother. And, and, and I lived with my grandmother for the majority of my life. My grandmother couldn't read or write. She was born in 1913 and was prevented from going to school. Some of the stuff that I saw in Color Purple, my grandmother actually mm -hmm. lived. Mm -hmm. And so, but she came through all of that and she contributed to my life. My mother sacrificed and contributed to my life even when my daddy wasn't there. Not only in my life, but my other brothers and my, my, my younger sister. She sacrificed. I've seen my mother go without eating just to make sure we had, that we had something to eat. Mm -hmm. If I asked her for, for money for, for lunch or something, I've seen my mother, who was working at, uh, in a hotel on, on a, in this exclusive place, Sea Island, Georgia, I have seen my mother go in her pocket and give me her lunch money. Wow. And I'd be like, no, no, that's your lunch money. She said, boy, take this. Mm -hmm. And she'll go out eating lunch that day. Yes. So she has given me the, she may not have been perfect. I may not have gotten everything that I wanted, but she gave me her best. 
So out of gratitude for her and women like her, I'd be remiss as a man. Hey, the microphone, sorry. <laughs> but I'll be remiss as a man if I allow the, the industry pressures and in what is popular, negativity being popular, putting women down being popular, being negative being popular, I would be remiss as a man to sell out people like you, sell out people like my mother. Uh-uh, I won't do it. There's a, there has been for years now, for decades, uh, this movement to speak negatively about our women. Mm -hmm. The R&B genre is the only, you guys, women, are the majority consumer yes. in terms of buying music. Mm -hmm. All music is majority, from a majority standpoint as a consumer, are purchased by women. So as a consumer, I think it's a sellout for us to degrade you. And so much so that some women on camera degrade, degrade themselves to get money, you know. And I'm not judging that. I'm not necessarily judging that at all. But I'm saying I say that you deserve more. Because I think we men were created to be your umbrella. We, if, we, if we're supposed to be the head of the household and head of the family, mm -hmm. that means we are we're your umbrella. Yes. You're under our covering. We're betraying our covering by betraying you to, to sell out and sing these negative songs under your clothes, talking about you being on the pole, making it clap. Mm -hmm. You won't say that about my mama. No. <laughs> and not let me know it. Mm -hmm. And no real man, to me, no real self-respecting man will allow that sort of kind of thing because you, women are our national treasure. You, you're the greatest asset on planet Earth for us. Mm -hmm. We can depend on you when the world is going crazy outside. When we come home to you, you make it all all right. You make it all better. Any, any man, any woman that's self-respecting, she wants a man that's going to uphold her. Yes. When I was touring with Steve Harvey, now I may not agree with everything that Steve said, but he said one thing that I will always agree with. When a man is into you, and hear me well, ladies, wherever you are, when a man is really into you, there are three things that he's going to do for you. He is going to protect you. He is going to provide for you. And he is going to profess who you are to his most important people. Because we're territorial, and we don't want anybody to, to when, you, when we're into you, we don't want no harm to come to you. We want to make sure you come to us and we can provide for you. That's why we take you out to these dinners, because we're showing you, hey, I'm willing to provide. And when we are into you, we're taking you home to mama, or to the most important people in our lives. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And so I want to just, life and death is in the power of the tongue. There's really power in the words that we speak to each other. So what I would like to do and what I am going to do is speak positive words to my women. When I say my women, as a man to all women, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're magnificent. You're the best thing ever made. You're created just for me. Me being men, man. I love you for eternity. You for me, perfectly. You're my magnificent lady. And so I think it's a beautiful song. When you listen to it, the rhythm is good. The music is good. The vocals are good. It's, it's just a really good song. I'm loving it. Ooh, that's so powerful. I like to, you know, we like to feel good. We like, you know, we need to hear that because as you say, as we, you know, the mantra that we need to have is positive. This negative stuff is out. It's not working. Like we talked about earlier. It's not working. So we need to get back to our, what we was brought up to be is to be with each other, to actually help each other. And not all this negativity. Absolutely. Ooh, you just powerful, Danny. I appreciate that. We're going to take a little bit of break again, and we'll be back to, we got to finish this off. Because, ooh, we got to actually get him to put all this in the book, because this is powerful. <laughs> but you guys, this is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. You know we're back. This is Good Deeds. And you know I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. Danny Clay, you are really doing an awesome conversation with us. Eye-opening, amazing. We can go on and on. And thank you for being so transparent. I mean, because that's what we need is people to be transparent because we hear too much too long and nobody's being healed. But let's talk a little bit more about, you know, the awesome things that's going on in your life. And also, we didn't touch on the magnificent lady 
Facebook group. We didn't yeah. talk about that. Yeah, that's an amazing thing. So you can, you know, I'm on Facebook, you know, Danny Clay. And so I started, uh, based upon my song, Magnificent Lady, you know, I started the group, you know, initially for one reason of, of, of to do the music song myself, the whole music project, but then it expanded. And I've, I've seen so many women, they're so strong and resilient, and they go through things such as breast cancer. I know somebody who's personally affected by breast cancer. Beautiful woman, young woman in her 30s, beautiful. I sung at her wedding, and she was recently diagnosed with breast cancer, and she faced it like a champ. And then I, I, this thing now going on with domestic violence. Well, I know women that's gone through domestic violence and survived. Mm -hmm. They're magnificent. They didn't believe that they were negative, such as what was being told to them. You could never get another person. You can, nobody's going like, to love you or like you because you got these kids. They just chose, made a choice to not believe, and they got some inner strength from somewhere and they decided that they're going to get up and walk in faith and just trust God with their life. They're magnificent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I want to be able to make my life count for something. You know, I made a bad decision that resulted in me going through drug addiction and, pri and, and imprisonment. But that's not the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you, I, I read the Bible a few times. And I saw that God kind of uses people with, with some touchy past. You yes. know, Moses, he kind of took a man's life for just fighting the Hebrew. But God used him after yes, that. Yes. David, after he was made king, he took, back, uh, he took Uriah's wife yes. and, and got her pregnant and then had Uriah killed. And although he went through a consequence, God loved David and gave David another chance at life. <laughs> and I learned something from the Bible. God don't look at man the way we look at people now. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 and 7 that man looketh upon the outward appearance mm. and what you got going on. Right. And what you're worth and who you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. But God looketh upon the heart. Yes. And that's good stuff for me yes. because it ain't about who I know. It ain't about who, where I've been. It's, on, it's all about what God is doing for me because yes. he looks on the heart. Yes. And when I told him I was sorry about what I did, I meant it. Mm -hmm. yes. And so he gave me a second chance at life. And who you know on parole get with Steve Harvey and Tyler Perry. Okay. It ain't never been done that I know of. And so that's nothing but the fingerprint of God on that. Yes. So now I've, I've been blessed with this song, Magnificent Lady. And um, I decided I'm going to expand it so we could, we could honor survivors of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. We can honor and empower survivors of domestic violence. We can honor survivors of violent crime, women that are survivors of violent crime. We can honor young girls that's trying to go to college and may have a hard time do, you know, getting the money, and we can help them. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm the only man in my magnificent lady group, but I've been blessed in two weeks. Yes. In two weeks, my membership is up to almost 3,500 wow. magnificent wow. ladies. And just last night, I signed up 94. And it's, it's a, it's, it don't cost a penny. I'm not trying to put a cost to it. I'm not going to do that. Yes. All you got to do is send me a join request and just be willing to put your hands to work and to help somebody, to make a difference in yes. somebody's life. Yes. If we work together, because I'm going to tell you, if you want something done right, this is what my life experience has shown me. If you want something to be done right, put it in the hands of a lady. <laughs> oh, you got, I got to give you five. I'm serious. That. Yo, that's right. Man, y'all, the house be clean, everything, because you're active. Simultaneously, I've seen a woman cook, clean, do homework with, ch with their children, mm -hmm. and talk on the phone. I can't do nothing but talk on the phone. <laughs> I can't type and talk at the same time. I got to get up. One of y'all got to go. I got to quit typing or quit talking. Now, okay. But I've seen women yes. do all of the above simultaneously. Yes. Because you're capable. Yes. You're magnificent. You're the best thing ever made. That's Created right. just for me. Every night before I go to sleep, I get down on my knees and I thank heaven for you because you're the best thing ever made. Wow. So I have like-minded ladies mm -hmm. that's partnered with me, the Magnificent Lady Group. I even got 
one of the premier dermatologists in the United States. Wow, that's Dr. Melanie, Melanie Macklin, mm -hmm. Dr. Mack from the yeah. Steve Harvey Morning Show. And she's going to do a, a seminar on the show dealing with skin, health, and hair issues. Dr. Macklin wow. is a beast. She's the best. Wow. She is the best. She's magnificent. Mm -hmm. And so I have women that's willing to help me. I have women that are, are experts in the field of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I have women that's gone through breast cancer and their survivors and it's like a giant support group and we're going to grow this thing to 100,000 members strong so we can make a difference and so I'm just grateful for what God is doing in my life mm -hmm. I'm serious about making my life count for something mm -hmm. you say I'm transparent I just I'm just me because I don't know how to be a star mm -hmm. I know how to be Danny that's right and God has blessed me even further I'm getting ready to be in the stage play called so amazing and I can't say I qualify for the part, but God has given me space to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm playing yes. the role of Luther Vandross. Wow. And so the, it, that's an amazing thing. The play is called So Amazing. It's coming to a stage soon. So y'all get your tickets when you hear about it. It's mm -hmm. going to be something nice. So it's, it's put on by Kevin Owens, who was actually Luther's background singer. Kevin being the uh, lead singer now of Ray Goodman and Brown. Yes, yes. And uh, he toured with Luther for... 25 years plus, mm -hmm. and so he's writing his life story on stage with Luther, and it's in a book called So Amazing, mm -hmm. and it's translated to a stage play, and I was cast to play the role of Luther Vandross. That's awesome. So, so you get to be able to, to put it out there. And it's so amazing, oh, amazing. Yes. <laughs> Love brought us together, together. I will leave you never and never. Cause we got amazing love. Wow, that's yeah. powerful. Woo, you know, woo, you know, we ladies, we like that song. So thank you. I, you know what? I really commend you because that's what we need. We need to have that power because we do look for the man for yeah. our covering. We do. Yeah. If you if you align it, we there. <laughs> You know, because I, I see, I've seen that growing up. Yeah. My mom and dad, they always in agreement. So that's powerful. That's a so, beautiful thing. Woo, that is a beautiful thing. It's amazing. Thing. But do this. Tell us how we can contact you. Well, um, you can contact me. My email is uh, Mr. D L Clay at yahoo.com. That's M R D L C L A Y at yahoo.com. You can hook, look me up on Facebook. My name is Danny Clay. Uh, I have a, a fan page, Danny Clay, and uh, my, my number that you can call me by is, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, because <laughs> I don't normally give a number out, but it's 912-506-9763. If I can be a blessing to you, it'll be my pleasure. Um, you can also look me up on www.magnificentlady.com. And I look forward to hearing from you because I, I may not be a pretty boy like Shamar Moore or I may not have the model good looks like uh, Idris Elba. But if the one thing I do give you is my best. That's all I can give you and that's all I'm going to give you is my best. I have, I've got a second chance at life and I'm determined to make it count for something. To make it count for something. So if you know anybody in your lives that's gone through drug addiction. If you know anybody in your lives that's been labeled the black sheep, take your mouth off of them because you don't know at what point God is gonna turn their life around and they're gonna be a blessing to you. So thank you for letting me come on to the program today. Dr. Renee, I appreciate you, I, I love you, and I appreciate you. So, and I look forward to coming back. Oh yeah, <laughs> you have to come back. And you know, approve us in anything that you're doing. We God bless you. We thank you so much for taking time out and hanging out with us. And we've had an awesome, awesome time. We just thank you for everything, for your support. And this is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday.